Okay, so I decided that I wasn't going to end the vlog. This will just end up being a, like a second vlog for today. So maybe I guess the first one is ended and then we're just going to start another one because this is uh, concerning obesity. And I did write some things down on the computer, so I'm going to read some facts off. And then some thrown in with the facts are just like some of my viewpoints, I guess. I wouldn't say opinions because they're more fact than opinions, but it's like from my perspective of what I've gone through. So we'll go ahead and read that. So, and this is from Wikipedia. Anyone can search this up. It's really not that hard. Obesity has caused between 100,000 and 400,000 deaths in the United States per year, costing society an estimated $117 billion indirect preventive diagnostic and treatment services related to weight. Slowly but surely, the obese will cost America more than it can afford in not only money, but lives. And that's just something I added to it. It makes sense. And this is a quote. An obese person in the United States incurs about an average of $1,429 uh, more in, ex in medical expenses annually. Approximately $147 billion is spent in added medical expenses per year within the United States. This number is expected to increase approximately $1.24 billion per year until the year 2030. So that's pretty bad if you think about it. I don't know these people that are promoting all this body positivity bullshit. I don't know if they even understand that. The economic um, shit that happens with all the obese medical expenses. And then here's a list of health issues due to obesity that people seem to ignore. Health issues due to obesity, which I... Some of these resonate with me so hard because I've, I've been through a few of them. Um, number one, type 2 diabetes. Two, cardiovascular disease. Three, I actually don't know how to pronounce this, so don't make fun of me for not knowing how to say it. Uh, colorectal. Honey, is that how you say it? I don't know. Well, it's a cancer. I'm assuming in the butt. I don't know. Yeah, you probably try Googling it. I could Google that, but it sounds funnier that way. It sounds awful, but funny. Um, osteoarthritis, liver disease, sleep apnea, and depression. And there's like so much more that's not even listed here um, from my own experience, but like it's, it's so much to list that I probably, I shouldn't because it would just make the video super long. But Personally, to me, I had pre-diabetic symptoms. I was never um, diagnosed with diabetes. The doctor never told me, oh, you're like on the brink of having diabetes. But I noticed certain things about my body that I did not discuss with my doctor that had me concerned and had me Googling symptoms of diabetes. And 9 out of 10 of them, I had, I had it. Like pre-diabetic symptoms. Um, never had the cardiovascular issue or that cancer or osteoarthritis, but I was also, I was diagnosed with fatty liver disease. Um, that was actually my last doctor's appointment in which I weighed 170 pounds, was diagnosed with liver disease, uh, fatty liver disease. I don't know if I need to specify that, but that was the last doctor's appointment I had before I started losing all my weight. It was kind of like a wake up call, just kind of hitting rock bottom like that and hearing it from a doctor. And then I decided that I needed to change. Uh, depression was a big thing with me. It, it was pretty bad. I mean, I'm not saying like losing weight and then you'll be cured of depression and anxiety and all that because I still have very mild depression. Very, very mild. Like, just like a tiny thing can set it off, but it's not like major like it used to be. And I do have anxiety still, and I take Zoloft for that, and I'm doing fine with it. But even with Zoloft before, with all my weight, 
and my insecurities, um, it was pretty bad. So yes, weight does have something to do with depression. Okay, so more facts. According to the NHANES, for those of you who don't know what that is, and I didn't know so I had to Google it, National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. According to, to their data, African Americans and Mexican Americans are more likely to be overweight than non-Hispanic whites. A 2000 st 2007 study found that receiving food stamps long term was associated with a 50% increased obesity rate among female adults. Now that makes sense because who's usually on food stamps, right? Single mothers. And uh, with the fact of African American and Mexican Americans more likely to be overweight than non-Hispanic whites, that makes sense too because also not to be like racist or anything, but if you pull up the stats, who's on food stamps? African Americans and Mexican Americans. Most are, you know. I mean, I'm on food stamps, so I'm like the percent, you know, that's not part of that. Even though I am Hispanic. But I just don't think I count. So that, that makes sense. Uh, that said, and this is my opinion, why is our government not making junk food uh, ineligible for food stamp purchases? With WIC, which I used to be on when I was pregnant and when my kids were younger, you were only able to buy healthy items such as 2% milk, dry beans, wheat bread, dry rice, juices, and um, cereals, like healthy cereals, not like Fruit Loops. It had to be like, oh, I, I can't even think of a brand right now, but just a cereal brand think of a cereal brand that you just hate because it's healthy that's what they would approve uh, food stamps should also implement a healthy food requirement um, no sodas no monsters no other energy drinks uh, no chips no junk I think all that should be banned from the food stamps and that would cure a lot of the obesity crisis that we do have for those who are on food stamps because if you've noticed, like, everyone's pretty much bigger. What's your fucking crips at? The poorer you are, the fatter you are. Which, oh, my thing went all blurry. Which is really weird, because back in the day, the richer you were, the fatter you were, the poorer you were, the skinnier you were. Backwards now. Crips. <sighs> okay, so moving on. I can confidently say that even though I greatly dislike the Obamas, Michelle tried her best to implement a healthier way for our children to eat in school. However, the food was said to be disgusting and unappetizing. I never got to experience that though because my children, um, only one, well, they were all kind of born yes. in, in the era of the Obamas, but um, really, I don't think they experienced what Michelle Obama had implemented in schools. So I, I don't know for a fact if it was disgusting. But, um, Really though, what food, what healthy food isn't disgusting and unappetizing, right? Fatties can't be choosers, so just deal with it. You need to put aside your taste buds feelings and just eat the damn veggies. It's not that hard. <laughs> Sadly, Trump took away what Michelle Obama implemented. His reasoning is unknown to me. If maybe I can research it some more and figure it out, might throw that in in a later vlog, but currently I do not know why he took out that from the schools because I think I think it was a good idea make sure your children are eating healthy at school um I don't know why you wouldn't want ch healthy children healthy child is a healthy future soldier for the American regime what can we do to help the future of our youth whatever we decide it needs to be now America's future looks very bleak. The promotion of body positivity and labeling dieting as fat shaming has ruined America. There is not a single person I have spoken to on the internet that is against body positivity. Everyone seemingly wants to promote overeating and obesity. Don't wash your horse, Chris. Don't Celebrities worry. such as Lizzo are currently the biggest discussion concerning body positivity. If you ask me, she is a danger to all her fans and should be shut down immediately. 
I promote the idea that every person promoting obesity to obese people should be liable for their illnesses they suffer due to their, their obesity being accepted. They should receive the individual's medical, medical bills in the mail since they support their lifestyle. I do not like the fact that American tax dollars are going to obesity medical issues. I did not agree to send my money to a fat person. The government is not using my tax dollars very well. Some people often say to me, because of the very fact that you were previous, previously obese, you should not be against body positivity. Or other phrases in that nature. I don't, so stupid. I don't understand why they think that. The fact that yes, I was obese should not make me like-minded and sensitive to the body positivity movement. I was thinking, I was like, oh, it'd be such a shame. It is because I was obese that I am now adv advocating for individuals to have a healthier lifestyle. But some Take say with me, bitch. that I am not advocating with my hate speech. <laughs> because I was obese, I know the struggles and the pains that other obese individuals may be going through. Don't try and tell Don't me that I should support <laughs> or I should be in support of obes obesity because I used to be obese. That's just not how it works. But anyways, that's the end of my little rant there that I, I actually took the time to write out and read to you. That way I didn't forget and then like have my thoughts scattered. Um, I wanted to make sure that I made a point with this. And I'll also include um, well, just some old pictures of me so you can see how big I used to be. Now, keep this in your Stop mind. Stop ghetto clapping. I am four foot 11 inches so the weight that I had on me was the equivalent to a six foot tall person weighing about 400 pounds when you have so much weight on such a little body it is an issue it is a big deal and the reason I'm bringing that up well I'll just include the screenshot of that and you can see for yourself the kind of people that I deal with on the internet daily if I say something they don't like, they go straight to my profile and f try to nitpick and find uh, reasons to just like insult me. They don't like my opinion, they're not going to attack Away from me, the discussion, they're going to attack me. And since I'm not fat anymore, they really have to find or they really have to look hard for a reason to hate me. And uh, they, they, they do bring up my weight. I'm too skinny, I need to eat a cheeseburger, um, the fat me was not even obese, like, you don't even look obese, and the way that. you were before was not even obese, you weren't even fat, and, but they're not understanding that it's just a picture, you can't tell how tall someone really is without, like, a, mm. a reference, you know, for the height, and in my pictures, most of my pictures, I don't look so short, but I am short. And when you have 170 pounds on a 4 foot 11 inch frame, you know I'll Google that it's awful. It is awful. It hurts. It's painful. It's deadly. Death was around the corner for me. And they laugh at that. They always laugh like I'm being dramatic. I'm not being dramatic. That it really was around the corner well, for me. Egg, if I went it. any further, my organs could have started shutting down. I could have developed diabetes. It could have been pretty bad for me, but I checked myself, and I got right with myself. And now I'm being attacked because they don't like my, my viewpoints, and my opinions, because I was fat, and I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just making this shit up because I hate fat people. It's just, it is what it is, and they don't like it, so they don't want to attack the argument. They want to attack me. <sighs> Alright, now I'm going to edit this and put it up and hopefully y'all enjoy my rant.